What's good everyone? On today's video, we're gonna be comparing the Adidas Ultra Boost 21 with the Brooks Ghost 13. Now many of you may be wondering, Matt, why aren't you comparing the Ultra Boost 21 with the Glycerin 19 that was just released? Even though the Glycerin 19 is a max cushioned trainer, just like the Ultra Boost 21, Adidas has clearly put in some technology to kind of take it out of that soft shoe, just out for a cushioned run, going out for an easy run, and they're trying to make it a little snappier. Now I use that word snappy very lightly because no one has ever accused the Ghost 13 of being a snappy ride. However, when you compare it to the Glycerin 19, it certainly is. To compare these two shoes, I took out the Ultra Boost 21 for a 7.4 mile run, somewhat easy miles, picked it up with some strides, and then I did the exact same thing the next day in the Brooks Ghost 13, except I only ran 7.2 miles that day. But same type of run, very easy with some strides to test out how these guys respond to faster speeds. Let's start off by talking about weight, because that's a big. Brooks reports the Ghost 13 in men's size eight comes in at nine ounces or 255 grams. Adidas reports the Ultra Boost 21 comes in at 12 ounces or 340 grams. Now Adidas doesn't say what size they're referring to, so let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say they're referring to men's size nine. But all that is moot because I wear a men's size 13 in the US, 12 in the UK. My Ghost 13 comes in at 11.6 ounces or 330 grams. My Ultra Boost 21 comes in at 15.8 ounces or 448 grams. There is a noticeable difference in these shoes. Let's start at the bottom and work our way up. Brooks does have these four foot flex screws. That gives it a very very flexible bendiness and where you're going to find that noticeable is in the toe off. I wouldn't necessarily say that this is a springy toe off but the flex groove certainly helps. The Ultra Boost 21 has continental rubber and a flex web rubber. They also have the LEP torsion system which stands for linear energy push. That's this yellow thing right here in the middle that reportedly increases the stiffness of your forefoot by 15% resulting in a snappier ride. Let's move up to midsole. As the name implies, the Ultra Boost 21 uses Boost Foam. It's a TPU foam, which is actually very resilient and very springy. It's the main reason that Boost was so popular like seven years ago when it was first introduced into Adidas shoes. Now the Brooks Ghost 13 has a blended midsole. We have their much talked about DNA loft foam on the lateral side of the shoe. We have their BioMogo foam on the medial side of the shoe. And this is the main reason that I didn't want to compare the Ultra Boost 21 to the Glycerin 19. The DNA Loft foam is a very soft foam. It, it gives you a very soft and forgiving ride. The BioMogo foam just is a little more springy. It's a little harder. It gives a little better energy return. Both the DNA Loft and the BioMogo DNA are EVA foams. TPU. EVA. Generally speaking, TPU is the more advanced foam. It's going to give you a more springy ride, but the blend of the DNA Loft and the BioMogo DNA make it a pretty good contender. These two shoes feel very similar as far as snappiness and toe off coat. The upper of the Ghost 13 is an open engineered air mesh and it's actually pretty breathable. The Adidas Ultra Boost 21 uses a prime knit upper and I'm going to have to give this round to the Adidas Ultra Boost 21 because they're using prime blue. It's a high performance recycled material that uses at least 50% Harley Ocean Plastics. Basically, those old water bottles that you threw away 10 years ago that are killing dolphins and turtles, those are gathered up and made into this shoe. The heel counter of the Ultra Boost 21 is very hard. You can see we've got these plastic overlays right here. They wrap around the side. They make it very rigid. Now this is a sock-like fit, so your foot does just slide right in like a booty, but these plastics hold your heel in place. Around the heel collar, we also have these raised padded pieces which keep your heel from slipping. In the Brooks Coast 13, we also have a very, very stiff heel counter. You can almost knock on this. It's like there's a big piece of plastic inside. The heel collar is a much more traditional heel collar. It's enormously padded all the way around. Now I haven't experienced any heel slip in this shoe. I haven't experienced any heel slip in the Ultra Boost 21, but this just looks a lot bulkier. This is a more traditional fit. It does have a tongue. The tongue is not gusseted. However, that non-gusseted tongue has not taken away from my midfoot lockdown. The Ultra Boost 21 has these Adidas cages on the side and those help give you a good lockdown on your midfoot. But here's where these shoes get a little tricky with which one to actually choose because they're both similar in many ways. Both of these shoes are a high cushioned, although I suppose the Ghost 13 is considered a mid cushion shoe, but it's a very bulky heel. Now I think both of these shoes are very similar in that they're both 
made for easy or recovery days. The Ultra Boost 21 has a 10 millimeter drop. The Brooks Ghost 13 has an enormous 12 millimeter drop. Now, even though both of these shoes are made for the same type of runs, I'm gonna have to give this round to the Brooks Ghost 13 because it's just a little lighter. It's just a little lighter and that contributes to being able to use it for a little more runs. This falls more into the daily trainer category than the Ultra Boost 21, which I have to say is strictly reserved for recovery runs and easy runs. And I feel bad saying it because they put so much technology into this new lap torsion system, there's 6% more boost, it's just not enough. It's added up to a very heavy shoe. And until I ran in this, the Brooks Ghost 13 was the heaviest shoe I own. I thought this was a really heavy shoe until I ran in this. So when I ran back to back, it became very apparent how light the Brooks Ghost 13 is. I don't think anyone has ever accused the Brooks Ghost 13 of being light. Based on the amount of rubber on the outsole, I'm gonna give these shoes a very similar prediction as far as how long they're going to last. I'm gonna say between five and 600 miles. At the time of this review, I've actually run over 450 miles in the Brooks Ghost 13, and the outsole rubber is still looking pretty good. I'm gonna have to talk about price, all right? Price does come into this. The Adidas Ultra Boost 21 is a staggering $180. The Brooks Ghost 13 retails for $130. Now the Brooks Ghost 13 has been out for about five months at the making of this video, so you may be able to find it a little cheaper. I know Adidas still has limitations. They're not accepting coupons when you buy this shoe, so good luck finding this much cheaper than the full price. However, just give it a couple months. So look, if you're an Adidas person, if you love Adidas shoes, if you are a Boost aficionado, you are gonna love the Ultra Boost 21. Same thing goes for Brooks. If you love Brooks, you are going to love the Brooks Ghost 13. However, if you have no opinion on either of these shoes and you had to choose one, my money's with the Brooks Ghost 13. It just ticks more of the boxes and it's $50 cheaper. All right, my friends, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for staying all the way to the end of the video. If you like this, if you've run in either of these shoes, how about this? If you've run in any running shoes, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. New videos twice a week. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple days.